Easy peeps, and welcome back to another episode. I've started from the bottom, the road to glory. How we all doing? Hope you're okay. Apologies for no camera. I've got some new lights coming, uh, so we've had to take down the old lights so you won't be able to see me. I've been in absolute darkness. That wouldn't be very good, would it? But you've still got my dulcet tones to enjoy through this amazing video. Disclaimer, this isn't an amazing video. <laughs> it's absolutely shocking because it involves Friday gameplay on Weekend League and it was an absolute mess, my friends. Now, you'll see the team at the beginning. We do have Team of the Year Van Dyke, but unfortunately, this will be the last game that you see of Van Dyke. You can see we get a penalty there and it looks like we've done some absolute fantastic control, moving it left or right to avoid the defender. Nope, nope, that's not what happened. We just literally couldn't control the ball and it was slipping away from our feet and it just did that automatically we didn't do that on purpose it wasn't meant just we couldn't control the ball that's how bad it was now we did play a few games live on twitch as well absolutely shocking we should have had penalties oh it was it was a mess it was a mess you can go and watch some of that if you want i don't know why you'd want to but it was an absolute mess gameplay on friday was absolutely shocking i think i've seen more people again complain i don't know how it's possible because we say these quite a few weekends that this weekend i don't think i've seen as many people complain about the about the weekend league as i have this weekend and again i'm saying it again this weekend so there's something wrong they need to sort it out i know there's that telemetry tool that they're giving to a selected people where they can you know share their feedbacks on what gameplay is and stuff like that but if literally a lot of the community are saying it's it, it's really shocking then we're in a bad state but the problem is we can't control the defenders passing isn't going where we want to look how slow that ball is there and it is unfortunate when he scores a goal on paper which looks absolutely fantastic he does a brilliant skill move to take it past the defender and it bounces off the keeper and it goes in so on the face of it that's a, from his point of view that's a great goal but we couldn't control the defender it comes from a ball that was really slow that we had no control over the speed of what the pass was and then all the players were out of positioning so although we got skinned you have to try and look back a few moves of how did the ball end up there in the first place now it's not saltiness it's just literally what can you do and the reason i've shown both this game and this game is one's a win one's a loss and you can see there look at the state of that how does that go in it bounces off two defenders feet it bounces off the goalkeeper and it's just an absolute mess and that was the reason for why we're getting rid of team of the year van dyke when the game plays like this I think you're better off trying to control super duper strikers or super duper midfielders than what you are having a super duper defender. Now, David Luiz, he's there. He kind of does the position. He's untradeable for us. So then we have a hundred and what? 150,000, 170,000 coin player just sitting there doing nothing because we've brought in a defender to replace him. But if we had six or seven million coins, that would be a great move. But we're literally rinsing all of our bank account to be able to bring that defender in in the hope of trying to seal out goals and try and get more clean sheets and if the gameplay is a mess that simply doesn't work so what's the point of having that you know tradable you know defender there and having an untradable defender just sitting on the bench when we can just use the untradable defender who's not as good granted in great gameplay if you've seen yesterday i love van dyke van dyke is amazing but in bad gameplay every player feels like a common goal so what is the literal point of it now eusebio to argue you know to back up that point a little bit even in trash gameplay eusebio scoring so if we get another decent top tier striker in or a top tier midfielder we, we you know we might be able to combat the sweatiness and the combat the fact that we can't control the defenders we're trying to score more goals so that's that's the thinking behind it so team of the year van dijk will be out of here it is a shame, but I think if we had more coins, like four or five million coins, then it makes sense to bring him in. But while we're wasting all of our coins on, on the defender, it kind of makes sense to put our coins into a midfielder or a striker. So, so far in this video, we're 1-1. One, one, one. So we've won one, lost one. And then we go into this game. Again, this game was an absolute mess of a game. In fact, all the games that we played on Friday were an absolute mess. But we do end up winning this one. We go 1-0 up. Was that a penalty? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, I think he actually got the ball if you look at the trajectory of where the ball actually ends up going. But the game decides it's a penalty. So Eusebio steps up on the fourth minute and plants it down the middle. And we go 1-0 up. 
in this game, but again, it doesn't feel comfortable. No matter how many goals you score, it just doesn't feel comfortable because you can't feel like you can't physically defend an attack. There, Desai, absolutely skinned with a Lacroquette. He can't manage to do anything with it because he's, he's so clunky and slow because of the gameplay. David Luiz just standing there because you can't physically move him forward because there's like some kind of invisible force field on your defenders. So what's the point of pumping all your money into defenders when we've actually got, you know, not so many coins? We might as well do it attacking so we can try and score more goals. I hope that makes sense. I hope you think it's the right decision. So we do go 2-1 up in this game here. Um, again, Eusebio still on the score sheet. Eusebio scoring more and more goals. But unfortunately, on the first batch of eight games, we go four and four. It was just literally unplayable. Honestly, some of the games we won, we shouldn't have won. We got a little bit lucky with things like the penalty and stuff like that. We genuinely shouldn't have won them. And then some of the games, we, you know, we conceded some good goals on some moves. But then like the uh, second game I showed you where the ball bobbled over Henri and then the two defenders and then the goalkeeper. It was just a mess. So I, I suppose we come out of it looking all right at 50-50. But honestly, it just doesn't feel smooth and it just wasn't a very nice experience. So let me go and show you the items that we've sold along the way. Right then. So gameplay's a mess. We, we know that. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that. So we have to try and get our kicks from FIFA, you know, in other areas. I mean, it tells you something when the biggest FIFA streamer in the world ends up getting more views on Twitch for playing Uno than for playing the game that he's famous for. Now, when that happens, you know that this game is in trouble. Anyway, back to where we are. We're in, you know, we're close to 1.2 milli. So we did sell Van Dijk. So we paid 15,000 coins over a milli for him. Minus tax, we make around about 30,000 coins. So we've made 30,000 coins profit. Now for most people, that's a whole weekend league. And all we've done is simply flip a Van Dijk. And so you've got to put yourself through this absolute crazy gameplay. And all we've done, the equivalent amount of coins, give or take, is flip Van Dijk. Now, it could be the right move, it could be the wrong move. I'm not too sure, but I'll take 30,000 coins. Like I've said, if you can't control your defenders, what is the actual point in spending all of our coins to try and shore up the defence when the game just won't let us do it anyway? We might, if we're going to pump coins into a player, we might as well do it midfield or attacking so that we can try and go down the route of score more goals than we concede. Right, so because of the yesterday's SBC that requires English players, England players are going absolutely mental. So we've cashed out. Now, this will affect our league SBC Premier League. We're close to completing it, but there are still a few teams that we need to pump quite a few coins in. And then because we bought Van Dijk, we couldn't afford to buy those players because we also bought the Benzema as well. So we were floating on around about 60,000 coins. So that means for us to be able to complete a few teams, that would have been all of our coin balance absolutely shot. So we had nothing to play with. That was another reason for getting rid of Van Dijk, but we did manage to just decide to, you know, sell the English players off because it kind of makes sense. If we can get 2,900 coins for Butland, I'm going to take that all day long. 3,200 coins for Pope, it's just mental. So, I mean, Pope was a 900 coin player just a few hours before the SBC, um, even with the league SBCs going. So that means after the SBC is finished, he's going to go back to 900 coins again. So if we do need to buy Pope or Pickford or somebody to complete a league SBC at least we've made coins while we can 3,700 coins for Baines you know absolutely shocking now we did make a little bit of a mistake whereas we did sell most of our Southampton players as well luckily we managed to keep one because we do need a Southampton player to score goals for a weekly objective to get the record breaker Shane Long um, so if you have got Southampton players in your club and stuff like that, just, just be wary that you will need a Southampton player to complete the weekly objective. But we decided to cash out anyway, because if we do need another Southampton player, by the time that SBC is finished, we'll be able to buy Danny Ings for 600 coins again, instead of selling him for 2,900 coins. Absolutely mental prices. So we will take that all day long. And there's some more players sold there, including a few bronzes just from Bronze Pat Method. Nothing crazy on those there. But that's where we are. So we finish on 4-4 four and four on the first day. Absolutely shocking, horrendous. Hopefully Saturday, Sunday, and now Monday because of weekend league being extended will be hopefully better. 
it might be a case where we just finish on 14 or 17 again and just get ourselves out for this weekend. Who knows, man? I don't know what we're going to do. It depends how smooth the gameplay is. If it carries on like it has been on Friday, then we won't be playing all the games. Um, but the only problem with that is it does give us then less division rivals points. So to summarize, we did sell Van Dyke. Uh, we get about 30,000 coins profit. We sell all the England players and we forgot how to play FIFA and the gameplay is a mess. Right then, <laughs> that is it. Again, apologies for no cam. We are sorting some new lights out. So hopefully that will be ready for tomorrow. But that is it for today. If you have stumbled across the channel, what do you think about hitting that subscribe button? Be greatly, greatly appreciated. So goodbye Van Dijk. For the six games you played, you were amazing. But I think we need the coins more. But thank you anyway. You may return. That is it then. Thanks for watching, my friends. Catch you in a bit.